I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Woke Wednesday takes on microaggression. That sounds like a fight's about to happen. It's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, pass it on that faith to the next generation. Like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, get the app. It's on Google, it's on iTunes, it's on Apple TV, Amazon, Roku, it's everywhere. And donate. Tax-deductible gift at support.higherthings.org keeps us passing the faith to the next generation, and we need your gifts. Our kids need this gospel in these dark times. Well, it's Wednesday. Erica Jacoby is the... Uh, Executive Director of Higher Things. She is also um, a former high school uh, public school teacher. Uh, Erica, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here again with you Wednesday after our virtual conference. I thought it went well. Check that out at conferences.higherthings.org. You can get that information now, but that's not that's a shameless plug for the virtual conference. Uh, first, what is microaggression? Please define the terms. This is the part of our talk where I, I give you the definition. So um, a microaggression is something that would seemingly be um, a harmless maybe act, statement, or question um, that maybe would be intentional or unintentional that would communicate hostile, derogatory, or maybe pre pre prejudicial um, thoughts toward someone in a marginalized community, um, specifically maybe um, an unconscious expression of racism, sexism, uh, homophobia, et cetera. Um, I should probably define marginalized community as well. So um, marginalized populations would be um, folks that are excluded from mainstream social, economic, maybe cultural or political life. So examples of what we would define as a marginalized population could be anywhere where um, a group that might be excluded due to their race, due to their religion, their political affiliation, cultural group, age, gender, just kind of depends. So basically, uh, it's, it's an indirect or subtle discrimination, not kind of an outward in your face. It would be something that would be interpreted as being more subtle and sort of systemic, perhaps, in nature. Uh, we're going to have to do a whole different topic <laughs> on systemic, okay? Um, can, you okay. Give some, can, can you give some examples of microaggression? Sure. I'll, I'll give you a few to kind of help out because I mentioned a lot of groups there that maybe were marginalized. So I'll start with kind of what I think is the obvious one would be um, racism, a, mic a, a, a micro aggressive term or question might be, your name is just so hard to pronounce. Maybe I would do this as a teacher in the classroom. And, and, and um, I, I, for instance, I had a lot of Indian students with uh, difficult last names to pronounce. And maybe I would, you know, not really bother to pronounce the Indian names or continue to pronounce them wrong. And, and doing that might suggest that to that person that they um, don't fit in culturally or linguistically. Um, and maybe their identity or their language isn't worth the time to learn about, right? Because they're sort of outside the norm. Um, another example that would be sexist would be, well, maybe you've heard the term man, mansplaining, right? Um, uh, like, I don't know, maybe I ask you a question, Pastor Borghart, about math or the budget or something, and you explain to me very slowly because maybe women aren't as good at math right? That would be mansplaining. That would be a microaggression. Um, maybe um, uh, another one is uh, ableism, right? Uh, uh, a microaggression against somebody with a disability might be saying, wow, the way you've overcome your disability is so inspiring, which the microaggression would come into play where I'm implying that it's unusual with someone with a disability to be able to accomplish um, something that an abled person would do. Um, another one would be ages, and maybe uh, a kid would say to an older person, wow, you know what Snapchat is, implying that they're not in the know or they're not smart. So those would all be microaggressions, right? Um, 
And the tricky thing there is, for me anyway, is going, wow, how do I, <clears throat> how do I not offend my neighbor? Maybe, um, maybe I'm not intending to. Um, for me, the eighth commandment um, kind of comes to mind, like as a Christian, how do I, um, how do I kind of like deal with this, this uh, offense of microaggression? How do I not stumble on it? Um, how do I put the best construction on maybe what somebody says? So can you help me out with this one? This one is subtle. Well, first off, I just want to make sure that is the microaggression um, on my part saying it or on your part hearing it? Oh, that's a great question. It's it's on your part saying it. You're the microaggressor when you're asking a question because the um, we're you're revealing your thoughts or your view of people that are other than you or that that are um, don't fit into your race, your gender, your whatever. Does that make sense? So, so the person asking the or the person saying, "Wow, why is your name so hard to pronounce?" or or um, you know, saying, wow, how did you, co- I, I, it's inspiring how you overcame your disability. That would be the mic, the person saying that would be the microaggressor. I think we need to, um, I think this deserves an eighth commandment sort of um, moment. Um, we do not get to judge the motives or thoughts of others um, by their questions. That's period. That's it. Um, even if we're dead on right, like, you know, Snapchat and you've got one foot in the grave. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think that maybe um, what a lot of these work things are missing is uh, the Eighth Commandment, which is putting the best construction on our neighbor's behavior, and also um, mercy and grace. So um, just because someone asked me where I'm from does not mean necessarily that they don't think I can be from America. They may just want to know whether I'm from Iowa or not. So uh, the best construction in the best construction applies even when the person's guilty. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do, uh, where, where Jesus says that. So what I would say is, is the way to sort of uh, get through this as a Christian is to be merciful. If you expect mercy from God, give, your, give mercy to your neighbor because you have no idea the stupid things that you're saying to other people. You follow me? Um, when I was an associate, I suffered from what most young um, pastors or professionals. I talked to my, um, my, my senior pastor, like he was a stupid idiot. Um, I had to repent of that later when I had an associate who talked to me like I was a stupid idiot. We just don't know the things we say sometimes. And that requires mercy, both upon the hearer and, and, um, even if the person is all those things, even if there is a hidden aggression behind it or a hidden prejudice or a hidden racism, or a his, hidden ageism, or a hidden ableism. Does that make sense? So whatever the, the hidden thing mm-hmm. is, um, you let it remain hidden and just love the person and forgive the person. That's the way that the Christian handles that. So if they say something ridiculously stupid or microaggressive, forgive, have mercy. And if it's really issue, they say, you what know if- what? Go ahead. No, my question too. That's that's really great. If if someone does ask you a microaggressive question, but what if you accidentally say something that's rude? Because sometimes we don't always think before we talk. What if you, as a Christian, are the microaggressor? Um, any the, advice there? I stumble, I, I fall, I say something stupid because I do that a lot. I know you mentioned you gave some examples too where you've done that thoughts on that because we're at, we, we talked earlier about a cancel culture, a call out culture, and it's really scary in social media. I say something stupid and I might right. be canceled. Worst, worst story I've ever done. And this is, um, this was, uh, ableism, I think. Um, because the person was, um, I walk into a room and I'm going to baptize someone else's sheep. Uh, they're mm-hmm. on their deathbed. And I was a young pastor and I was like ready to go. You know, like where, where pastors like ready to go. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. there's a soul mm-hmm. to be saved. And I was, this is why I trained for nine years, <clears throat> an extra year at LSU. So, and I, and I, <clears throat> I knock on the door and the, the person opens the door and I'm like, I'm here to see Rufus, Uncle Rufus. Pastor, something sent me here. And the person looks at me and goes, 
are you the minister? And being a smarty pants, you know, wearing my black collar, I'm like, no, the black makes me look very skinny. That's why I wear the black. <laughs> and the uh, person behind them was a teenager, starts laughing. And I'm like, why is, it la- why is he laughing while I'm, while I'm talking? Turns out the person goes, I can't see you, I'm blind. I'm like, and I look at him I'm like, <gasps> yeah, I know, it's awful, isn't it? It's painful when I do it, it's, it's what I do. So the, so, the, so the only thing I can look at him is like, I am so sorry, please forgive me. Because that's the, that's the only thing in, your, in, the, in, the, in the Christian's quiver. I'm sorry, I forgive you, on, on Jesus, for Jesus' sake. I'm sorry, I've sinned, I messed up. That didn't, I didn't mean that the way it sounded. Please forgive me, please have mercy. Um, I'm not gonna grovel, I'm just gonna ask you for forgiveness. I'm not gonna make excuses for it, I'm gonna ask you for forgiveness. And then the proper answer to that is I forgive you. So, so, so there's Christianity that can go on both on the, the person with the, the inadvertent or, vert, or, or vertent, is deliberate mm-hmm. microaggression. Yeah, mm-hmm. and also the person who's hearing the microaggression or the stupid comment. So there's two places where Christianity can take hold. I'm sorry, I forgive you. And if it's so blatant that you have to say something, then I would say something with the best construction. I know you didn't mean this, but just because I'm old doesn't mean I won't know what Snapchat is. Um, just a gentle correction. But I think that, 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 and we could talk about this in a later date, laughter and, 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 and killing with kindness and killing with joy is another way of dealing with it, which also flows from the Christian faith as well. Um, laughing it off, like, I know you don't mean that I'm, I'm, I'm so old that I, 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 I don't know what Facebook is, or maybe I know what Facebook is because I'm so old. Um, uh, rather than, than sort of accusing the person, then just laugh it off and make it a teaching moment. Let them off the hook. Let them off the hook. Right, for just forgiving them in a roundabout way. Mm-hmm. Erica Jacoby is the executive director of Higher Things. She is the face that runs the place in Higher Things. Thank you so much, Erica. Thanks for having me. Another you. good discussion. We will see you next week. Um, lots of things that we can do on this. Um, forgiveness. Mercy. Love. Can't go wrong with it. Joy. The fruit of the Spirit. You have been forgiven by Christ. You can forgive others. God has shown mercy to you. You are outside his family. He has adopted you. He calls the things that happened in your past, past. And he calls your present gift from him. Think about that the next time you are either the microaggressor or on the receiving end of the microaggression. Christ has done it for all for you and gives it to you as gift. I'm Pastor Borkart, Pastor George Borkart, um, and this has been another Higher Things video short.